now we're going to talk a little bit more about spontaneous mutations. These typically are going to arise due to replication errors. So during DNA replication, DNA polymerase is pretty good, but it will occasionally insert incorrect nucleotides. So although we have polymerases, DNA polymerases, which can proofread, can correct these errors, they can persist if the cell is not able to detect it and not able to correct it. So these types of errors are usually due to mispairing and usually are going to lead to point mutations. If though a DNA strand loops out, becomes displaced, or if RNA polymerase, or excuse me, DNA polymerase slips, small insertions, small deletions can occur. This replication slippage can occur anywhere in the DNA, but it happens to be more common in repeat sequences. This is because it can kind of lose track on where it's at if there's a whole long sequence of, say, ATG, ATG, ATG. These are typically going to be hot spots for hereditary diseases, things like Fragile X and Huntington disease. So within these um, spontaneous mutations, you can have some base modification issues. So when they try to pair up, you're going to have some issues. These purines and pyrimidines can exist in different forms. We call it tautomeric forms. And they're just alternate chemical forms. They're going to differ by just a single proton shift in that molecule. And so what happens is these shifts can change that bonding structure, and now you're going to start to get this non-complementary base pairing. So through this, it can potentially lead to these permanent base pair changes and then mutations. So here we have a T and an A binding. Okay, we've got, uh, and this would be the normal bonding. We've got a C and our G bonding here. And you can see with just a small little shift, um, instead of a double bonded O here, you have a single bond and a double bonded between the carbon and nitrogen. Now you have three hydrogen bonds. And now this T can bind to a G. If that persists after replication, that could potentially be a point mutation. And similarly, this cytosine, instead of having this double bonded carbon to nitrogen, it's now single bonded here, and, and this is a double bond, and so now instead of three hydrogen bonds, you might only have two. And then in this case, it will bind with an adenine instead of the guanine. Uh, you can also have other issues, the DNA base damage based on depurination, deamination. This is the most common cause of these spontaneous mutations. So again, if you take a look at these, here you've got this carbon bound to the nitrogens here, um, and you've got now changing to this uracil. You've got instead of binding to the nitrogen, now it's bonded to the oxygen. Now you have the uracil with an adenine instead of this cytosine binding to a guanine. The adenine can be changed here to a hypoxanthine, which is just a different type of base. Um, but again, you can see that this would lead to alternate bonding. In this case, it would be binding to a cytosine. So this would be uh, replaced by a G after uh, replication. DNA can also suffer damage. So things like oxidative damage. This can happen just byproducts of normal cellular processes, uh, exposure to high energy radiation. So things like superoxides, hydroxyl radicals, ox hydrogen peroxide. These can all be produced by byproducts of normal cellular processes. These, you've probably heard about free radicals before. What they can do is they can go, they can damage the DNA directly. Transposons are transposable or mobile genetic elements that can move within or between genomes. These transposons, when they're integrated into these new locations, if they're going to disrupt a gene, um, or if they, excuse me, if they're inserted in the center of a gene in the coding region, that could potentially disrupt that function of that protein. If it's uh, inserted into a regulatory region of that particular gene, again, can cause massive problems so that it is no longer regulated in the way that it should be.